Hi everyone. Welcome to our first live animal feeding from New Hampshire Audubon Massive Basic Center here in New uh, Auburn, New Hampshire. My name is Amanda Clem and I am the animal care specialist here at the Massive Basic Center. I'm going to wait for a few of you to uh, join in and I will start feeding the critters. I think first we're going to go for a walk though because one of my favorite critters is out for hello Robichaws in Maine. Uh, one of my favorite guys is out for his exercise today so we're going to go find him. I just saw him walk out the door. For those of you who have been here before, he lives in this tank. Does it, he's not in there. So I guess we'll go looking for him. There he is. Snappy. This is our common snapping turtle. His name is Snappy, or we call him Snappy. And he's out for a little walk before his feeding today. Kind of takes over the whole hallway when he feels like it. Hi, Snappy. He'll be just excited, as excited to get back in so that he can have his lunch. You want some lunch, handsome? Come on. Sometimes he follows us. All right, so we're going to be moving around a little bit today. I hope that you don't get um, motion sickness from my video. This is our first time attempting this, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, again, for those of you who are just joining, my name is Amanda Clem, and I am the animal care specialist here at New Hampshire Audubon Massive Basic Center. Um, my main job here is to oversee the, uh, the care of the animals, uh, the feeding, the cleaning, the scheduling of volunteers, uh, buying food and supplies, and maintaining, uh, making sure that they have all their regular health checks. Um, most of our animals are fed, fed by a, a very dedicated group of volunteers here at the Massabesic Center. Unfortunately, right now, we are closed to the public, so um, I'm doing all the feedings uh, rather than have people in and out of the building. Um, all our animals are ambassadors for their species, meaning they are an important part of our education programs that we do here um, at New Hampshire Audubon. And our education programs help support our mission of um, protecting New Hampshire's natural environment for wildlife and for people. So they are a very important part of what we do here. They're well loved by children and adults, even the snakes. And um, today I am going to be feeding some of the turtles and some of the frogs. So I have started today by preparing their salads. They've already been plated. I watch Food Network, so plated is a fancy word for that. Here are their salads. Our box turtles are omnivores, uh, which means that they eat plant and meat matter, but we provide them with their salad first. Make sure they get all that goodness from the uh, plant matter, and then they get their meat. So I'm gonna um, feed them one at a time and introduce you to each of them. Let's see, this plate's going over here. This is our three-toed box turtle, who is very good at demonstrating what a box turtle can do. If you notice, it looks like he has no head, no tail, and no legs. There he is. And the reason that box turtles are called box turtles is their ability to close themselves up in their shell like this. He has a hinge on the bottom of his shell, allowing him to close himself in tight all the way around. I'm gonna put him down so he can eat. He is a picky guy. If he comes out, he's probably going to go for the blackberries first. Then he'll walk around through the rest of his food, make it look like he ate something, and he'll be waiting for his crickets in a little bit. So if I turn him, it will be easier to see. So we'll see if he comes out. Hi, 
Hi, Eli and Sophie. Hi, Colin. Hi, Silas. Turtles do everything really, really slow, including eating. So we may see him take a bite. Oop. We may not. He's getting brave for the camera. There he goes. And of course, he's going right for that juicy blackberry. <laughs> I love watching turtles eat. Look at that. Let's go get the plate for this one. This is our Florida box turtle. He's ready to go. So we'll go back over here, get another plate. And it usually doesn't take him long to find. This one is a very good eater. They almost all usually Turn that. Go for that blackberry, and there he goes. Now you'll notice that the Flora box turtle has a different looking shell. It has a different pattern. He's a little bit smaller than the three toed box turtle. That's kind of an olivey green color. Florida box turtle is a little bit darker and has some stripes on his shell. The last one here is the ornate box turtle. And he knows that he's the last one, so I gotta go hurry up and get him his. So we will go get his salad. Here you go, buddy. There. So while they're eating, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the comments and I'll do my best to try to answer them. This is our first time doing a, a live feeding in addition to, uh, I'm trying to live feed and feed and video at the same time. So it's a little tricky. Hi Winnie. Hi, Maddox. Like I said, turtles do everything a little bit slow. Here we go. Let's get a close up of this messy guy. He has blackberry all over his face. And doesn't he look happy? Oh, he's going to open his mouth. What are their favorite foods? I'm gonna come back to my spot over here. Um, their favorite foods? Well, I would say for the most part for the box turtles that their favorite foods are the proteins that they're going to get. So crickets, mealworms, superworms, earthworms, anything like that. Um, second place would probably be a fruit which we provide a small amount of. Um, we want them to get the nutrition from the greens and vegetables they get too. Some of them are picky and pickier than others. Uh, Mr. Three-Toed Box Turtle really doesn't like his salad very much, but um, when he's hungry, he eats it. So they eat twice a week here at the center, as do our frogs, and that's fairly normal for for um, reptiles like turtles. <clears throat> uh, are they boys or girls? Are three box turtles? To the best of my knowledge, our boys. Yes. Hi to Winnie's grandparents all the way in North Carolina. Thank you for watching. Let's see who any other questions that I missed. All right, so we need to find Snappy again so that I can feed him. Hold on. Oh, there he is. He's right behind me. Here's Snappy. Snappy's just kind of doing his own thing today. It's been very, very quiet at the center now that we're not open to the public. And um, <laughs> he enjoys getting out when he can. I'm gonna put my camera down so that I can put him back in his enclosure and we'll give him his greens for today. He's getting some kale 
and uh, we'll see if we can get a good um, shot of him eating that. So just bear with me for a second. All right, Snappy. Okay. So this is Snappy, our common snapping turtle. He's coming in for a close-up. All right. He's pretty heavy, and he's scratching me a little bit, but we have handled him, so he's fairly used to being um, held. Maybe not his favorite like this, but... I'm gonna put him back in his tank now. Say goodbye, Snappy. Close up for the kids that are watching. All right. And there he is. I put him up on his ledge, which he usually doesn't stay there very long. So let's see if we can film him taking a, taking a dive off the edge. You coming in, Snappy? Here he goes. <laughs> Great question. How big can snapping turtles get? Snapping turtles can get really big. Um, I've read on a New Hampshire Fish and Game page up to 70 pounds, which is really huge. Um, I'm not sure the last weight on Snappy. I'd have to check, but he's pretty small compared to a snapping turtle that would be... 30, 40, 50 years old. He is just in his teens, we imagine. So um, he has the potential to grow quite a bit bigger. All right, I'm going to uh, leave the camera on Snappy. And I'm going to go get his greens. So here he is. He usually knows if I show him that it's time to eat. Yeah, are you hungry? All right. So I want you to all watch and notice how he comes up to the surface. He's going to take a snap at his greens. He's going to pull them underwater to eat. Aquatic turtles, like snapping turtles, can only swallow when they're underwater. So he doesn't come out on land to eat. He brings everything underwater to eat. Are you ready, Snappy? So he's getting kale today. And the turtles don't have teeth, they have a beak. Other animals that have a beak, like birds. Um, but his beak is uh, very sharp, so he can, whoops! And he just swallowed it. Now that is, Fairly easy for him to, to get down. If it's a little too big, you can see he might spit a little bit out and kind of shred it with the side of his beak, slice it with his beak. Now he can go up and get it again. Here he goes. Let's give him some more. He's a, such a good eater. He would really rather eat his worms and that sort of thing. But he always eats his veggies. Kids, if you're watching, always eat your veggies, like a, uh, your, your salads and things like a snapping turtle. He's gonna put everything in his mouth now. They eat underwater. That's, why do they eat underwater? That's a great question. Uh, it's just their anatomy. Their tongues aren't made the same way ours are to swallow like we can. So the, the water helps them uh, swallow. Hi, Ezra. Thanks for watching. Oh, snappy. We're gonna put a little bit more in since he seems to have his mouth full. Sometimes he'll just walk around, <laughs> swim around rather, with this food in his mouth. Yep. And now you're getting to see him use uh, his front foot a little bit to kind of get that food where he wants it. <laughs> Snappy. <laughs> So 
So I'm gonna give him a minute to eat and uh, let's go check on our box turtles and see how they're doing. Now, as predicted, this is our three-toed box turtle. He has eaten everything that was a fruit. Or should I say he ate only the fruit and left everything else behind, which is what he always does. And then he just sits and waits patiently, hoping that I'll throw a little crickets or something in there. So that's a three-toed box turtle. That's about, that's usual for him, though sometimes he will walk through it and make it look like he ate it. And the Florida box turtle has made a complete mess. What are you doing? But it looks like he ate quite a bit of his food, okay? And the Western box turtle, he's more interested in being on camera. This is a friendly guy. And if I put my finger over here and just kind of say, he'll come right up. He probably wants to eat though. I don't want him to eat my finger. He's very handsome. Ah, Amelia, how long do turtles live? Uh, that's a tough question because there are lots of different types of turtles and um, I can't really answer that with a general answer. Uh, some turtles like tortoises, very large tortoises that we do not have uh, in North America can live over a hundred years. Um, but it's possible for many of these turtles that we have here to live 30, 40, or 50 years. That wouldn't be so unusual. Uh, one of the next turtles I will feed is a musk turtle, and we know that he is about, she is about um, over 40 years old. Um, and like I said, snapping turtles, which are native to New Hampshire, could also live um, well into their 30s, 40s, maybe 50. Winnie wants to know if they play together. Well, the turtles we have, the box turtles that we have, Winnie, don't live in the same house and they wouldn't know each other really in the wild, probably. So we keep them separate just in case they don't get along because we wouldn't want them to not get along with each other. Does that answer your question? And all our turtles that swim in water have their own water to swim in. So we don't really let them play together, but we do take them out for exercise. And I have a wonderful group of volunteers that come to give turtle exercise because it's important for them to get out and stretch their legs and explore. Uh, sometimes in, in the winter, they're exploring the room here in the, in the center. And when the weather gets nice, they will go outside for a little walk. We have to be very careful to keep an eye on them. So let's go bring some greens to the rest of the turtles. A handful over here, and I will introduce you to a couple more turtles. Behind the scenes. So our turtles, some of you have seen this door. This door is always closed behind here, but this is where we get to our turtles. And this is the musk turtle. I probably should have showed you from the front. Here's our musk turtle. Now you notice, I think she kind of looks similar to a snapping turtle, but very miniature. All right. I'm going to ask if you know the answer to put it in the comments. What is the nickname for a musk turtle? If you know, you can put it in the comments. But let's go give her her greens. Hi, Musk. Hi. She's not a huge fan of this, but I'm gonna put some in here anyways. She's going to wait because she would rather have something a little tastier. Then we'll go down here and see my friend, the painted turtle. Once she realizes I'm here, she's gonna go nuts. Painted. There she goes. <laughs> what are you doing? So she's getting a little bit of kale as well. Oh, Callie with the right answer. Musk turtles are also called stink pots. 
I don't know, Callie, if that's fair, because uh, I don't know if everyone knows that you're already a nat you were a naturalist, so that might that might be cheating. Ah, yes, Lisa said that she saw some fish. Did you see some fish in the musk tank? Yeah, you are seeing you are seeing fish in the musk tank. The fish were intended to be um, food. However, they have become friends. Let's see if we can get them on the, there they are. So we got some shiners for, small shiners for our aquatic turtles. And uh, I guess Musk is keeping them as uh, pets. She is not interested in eating them, which isn't really that unusual. Uh, she's not terribly fast and um, she prefers things that move a little bit slower, but it was worth a shot to try. Um, the painted turtle did enjoy them and the bullfrog also enjoyed them too. All right, we're gonna go feed some frogs now. Stink pots, yeah, stink pots are babies with stinky diapers too. <clears throat> Let's see if I missed any questions. If you have more questions, feel free to chime in or ask them again. This is tricky multitasking like this. Now I need my tongs. There they are. I'm going to attempt to do a feeding with the gray tree frogs. We have three of them here. And uh, they've recently, we used to take all our frogs out, um, but for the sake of time today, I'm gonna actually have them come up to the top of the tank and um, I will tong feed them. So I'm gonna place the can't phone over here while I get set up. You should be able to, they'll eventually come up. There's two, there's two of them right there. <laughs> All right. I have one that's down over here. Come on. Here he comes. My apologies for my hand. I'm going to turn you around. This guy is always ready to eat. Come on. So I have uh, mealworms today and I'm going to give them mealworms with my tongs. And it's absolute, oh, this guy is so ready to eat, he almost fell over. So we'll, uh, oops, drop the first one. Let's try again. <laughs> Pardon my laughing. I still think it's hilarious when they eat, no matter how many times I do it. We're gonna wake this little guy up back here. Oh, now this guy's hanging. Well, we'll feed him because he's very excited. There he goes. All right, the last one I need to feed is back here. Should be a little shy. Would you like a worm? She got it. Uh, like I said, this was a this is kind of something new I've been trying with the frogs. We used to take them out and put them in containers so we could monitor what they were eating. We've had a couple times where, due to time, um, that wasn't the easiest way to do things. So um, I started offering them their food in their tank, Mark, and it's actually really interesting because they do, they do come up to the top for it. Um, you wouldn't think that they would know, but they know. So let's, uh, let's give another one to this guy right here. <laughs> These guys don't jump at the camera as much, but um, the bullfrog does. And uh, I've been known to uh, squeal when the bullfrog jumps. There you go.
This one's just not interested in being on camera today. You're gonna let it get away? That one's not as hungry today, and that's okay. They usually have, um, depending on the size of the item, uh, two or three. And uh, that one ate quite a few the other day. So we'll see if these guys are still hungry. Yeah, that one's still hungry. Oh my goodness gracious. My goodness. I'm not sure actually on the age of these frogs, uh, Megan. Um, at least a couple years, uh, the big one. The smaller one, not, so, not, as, not as old. Okay. And um, I don't know that they've ever hopped out. We, I do have to put the cover back on them. Um, they're not as um, strong to force a cover off of anything as say the bullfrog, but the bullfrog has been known to uh, tip the t um, pop the top off his enclosure if he's traveling somewhere. So that's it. Those are the gray tree frogs. And now I have to hope that you're gonna scoop back in. Can you scoop back in for me? I forgot my glove. So I have to run back over. I have to run back over and get my gloves because we don't handle any of our frogs with our bare hands. We don't want uh, anything that's on our hands to uh, touch their skin. So I will put on my glove. My apologies for taking you on this walk around the room. I don't know how old these ones are off the top of my head. I know that, um, I believe the biggest one has been here a couple years and I'm not too sure on um, the other two. I would have to look in their file. Oh my goodness, they're, now they're being wacky. All right, so I'm gonna move this little guy, or that's, actually this is the big frog. I'm gonna put him here so I can safely close the lid. And then I'm gonna move this one just down here so I can close the lid. And this one, hi, oops, you're gonna be a, you're gonna be a stinker. Well, now how am I gonna do that? Cause I'm holding my phone. You're making it kind of tricky. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess we're hanging out here with the frog for a little bit. Pardon me, folks. Okay. Sorry about that. You're gonna go down here for a little bit. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm not having good luck with this little one today. There we go. I can't, there we go. All right, so I am going to put the top back on the frogs because no, we do not want them to jump out. They are pretty good little jumpers and they're climbers too. Uh, you'll notice that they have the types of feet that they can climb up the glass. Let's see if none of them are doing it right now, though. So, there they are. Does the bullfrog bite? Well, I don't know if bite is a good word. The bullfrog gets very excited to be fed. So, I'll show you the bullfrog. He gets very excited to be fed. And he will just sort of launch himself. Hi, Mrs. Hopi. He will launch himself at whatever I am putting down for him to eat. And so, I don't think he's trying to bite me, but he gets very excited and sometimes he doesn't have great aim, which is usually when the bullfrog makes me squeal. He is our biggest frog we have here. And when he jumps and opens his mouth, it, it, uh, it can be a little surprising, shall we say. All right. Painted has eaten some of her greens. Looks like Snappy. Snappy, nice job. Look at that. Boys and girls watching, 
he ate his whole salad today, so I hope you all eat your vegetables too. He's ready for something else. So let's go ahead and we'll do a round of crickets for crickets for the turtles. Now you'll notice that the crickets are a white color and you're probably thinking, why are they white? The crickets are white because we dust calcium powder on them. Calcium is something that helps keep the reptiles, amphibians and amphibians uh, healthy good for uh, strong bones and shell development, okay? And here we go. Um, I'm going to switch the camera angle. Here are some of my crickets. And now this is the three-toed box turtle. He doesn't move much except when there's crickets available. Are you gonna get him? No, nope, he's gonna be pokey, so we're gonna move to the next one. She'll probably take one right out of my hand. Here we go, Florida. This is our Florida box turtle. <laughs> she kinda grabbed it, and then dropped it. No, oh, and now she'll attack it. You're probably thinking, how do they catch them? They're so, the insects are so fast, but the uh, crickets are, the, the turtles are surprisingly fast when they, they need to be. I just found a cricket crawling on my shirt. This is the ornate box turtle, and he loves to just, he'll come right up here, won't ya? Woo! So I've got a little bit edge of my glove. some more in. They usually get about four crickets at a time. So I'm going to give. Now he gets to chase them. And chasing them is great. It gives them a chance to get exercise. It's an enriching part of their day. Turn that around again. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to uh, drop some earthworms in for Snappy. Just bear with me for a second. I have uh, more than that for all of them. They're not all done being fed, but some of this I'm not able to do with uh, one hand with food and one hand with a camera. So um, I will probably wrap it up here shortly so that I can finish feeding them, but I'm happy to take questions if anyone has any questions. Um, before I finish up. So Snappy is getting a few earthworms today. They're not the biggest ones, but uh, they'll be a little snack for now and I'll give him a little bit more later. And uh, these are kind of fun to watch him catch. Snappy likes to eat um, sardines and he loves to eat worms and he'll eat crickets. Occasionally he'll eat frozen thawed mice as well. But I didn't think that everyone would be so as excited about seeing him eat those. So I saved the worms for today. Hugo wants to know where all the animals came from. What brought them to the Audubon? Well, that's a great question, Hugo. Uh, most of our animals that are here were actually uh, pets that were owned uh, by people. And they decided they didn't want them anymore and they donated to them to our center. Now, we are not a rescue. Um, if you were to find a wild animal, you would contact a wildlife uh, rehabilitator in the state of New Hampshire. But at the time, we were able to provide a home for those particular animals and they could live out their uh, life here because they were, um, because they were pets, they're easily handled. Uh, friendly enough to use for programs so it works out for us to have them here. Um, our raven who lives outdoors, that's our only outdoor animal, was injured and rehabilitated and came to uh, live with us because his wing injury didn't heal quite all the way so he was deemed non-releasable so he's become an educational animal. And we also have a timber rattlesnake our timber rattlesnake came to us uh, when the 
uh, Amiskeg Fishways in Manchester closed last year. He was transferred to us by uh, New Hampshire Fish and Game. He is the only captive uh, timber rattlesnake in the state of New Hampshire. He's the only one that you can uh, visit on exhibit in New Hampshire. And uh, we'll take a peek at him. Uh, I'm not feeding him today. Uh, I would not do that with one hand, but uh, we'll take a peek at him in a little bit uh, before we go. And I'll give you a tour of all the animals. All right. And I think I've answered all these questions. So we're gonna go over and give Snappy some worms. Snappy loves worms. I'm gonna turn the camera around. Oh, he's in position. This is where Snappy, this is he knows. He knows something is going to happen. What is it, Snappy? Oh, I dropped a worm already. Now, watch and behold as Snappy sees the worm but still doesn't catch it. Yep. Oh, there he goes. See how fast that was? So, pardon me, I dropped a worm. If you encounter a snapping turtle in the wild, your best idea is to enjoy it from a distance. If there is an adult and they think they can help it cross the road in the direction it's going, it would be fine to sort of walk behind it, but snapping turtles have this very large mouth, very sharp beak, and they are not an animal that you want to mess around with. So, I'll give him another worm. He missed that one. Oh, Snappy, it's down here. It's down here. It's down there. Did he get it or did it fall? Let's do a couple more worms. Hi, Mrs. McCormick. Hi, Sophie. Yes, we did have a chipmunk. Uh, Chippy the chipmunk lived here for 11 years. She was um, an injured chipmunk and uh, her injuries were pretty extensive. She was sent to a rehabilitator and she lost uh, one limb. She had a stumpy tail and her jaw was misaligned uh, in her accident with a cat. So she needed dental work every two weeks. Um, she lived to be 11 years old, which is outstanding for a chipmunk. Uh, she passed away last summer, last August. We miss her very much. So we currently don't have a chipmunk, unfortunately, but she was well loved uh, while she was here. She was a favorite. Snappy, can you get that worm right there? Can you get that worm? He's thinking about it. <laughs> he doesn't know how to get it now because it's kind of stuck. What do you think? Are you just not feeling it today, Snappy? Let's see if I can get one more in there. He's not doing a very good job, but this is not unusual for Snappy. All right, here he comes. Snappy, I like to do it over here so that you can... There he goes. Two and, two and one right there and he just gulps them up. Nice job, Snappy. All right, I'll give you the tour of the rest of the room. For those of you who haven't been here before, we do have a bullfrog. He'll be eating in a little bit. I can't feed him with a hand and uh, with a camera in my hand. That'll be too tricky. Uh, this is the painted turtle that we gave her greens to. Uh, down here on the bottom are where our box turtles live, but you see that I have them out for eat feeding today. Uh, we have two ball pythons. One of them is in the moss box and one of them is under the log hide. Their names are Nye and Kai. Not all our animals have names, but Nye and Kai came to us as pets, so we kept uh, their names. They are a favorite amongst uh, visitors and Folks that come for birthday parties or camp experiences, uh, they are easy to handle. People really love them. Uh, that's another box turtle enclosure, as well as the musk turtle right here. And one of my personal favorites, Mr. Toad. How can you not love Mr. Toad sitting on top of his cave? I have a very big glare. There we go. So Toad will get some crickets shortly. 
And we have a wood frog who is very difficult to spot, but you might be hearing the wood frogs. Lately, they've been making a racket. It's that time of year for the wood frogs. I can't find it, but this is what a wood frog looks like. The wood frog eats mealworms. Our wood frog doesn't seem to like crickets. At the end of our room, we have the timber rattlesnake. Now, unfortunately, his light bulb just went out on me, so his light is not on right now, but I'll let you look at him. He's very handsome. And he's going to eat soon, not today. I'm not going to do that with a camera in my hand. And uh, he will get a frozen thawed rat. He doesn't eat live animals. He eats pre-killed animals. And there he is. And then back to our wood frogs over here. This is where the three-toed box turtle lives. And then if I go over here, here's our little hermit crab. He's tucked in the corner. And then the famous hissing cockroaches bonus today. Here's a white one. Now when I arrived today, this one was, uh, well, you would think it was brown. It had a little crack down its back. When it does that, it means it's getting ready to molt. So in the time that I've fed the animals today, that particular cockroach molted uh, from its exoskeleton, and now it will be white for a little while. It's a little bit uh, weird looking, but they do this as they grow. That's a fairly medium-sized ones. We have many, many, many more in there. And they're actually kind of a favorite because those are easy to handle. Our crickets live in this container and uh, we go through about 500 crickets um, a month. So if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Thank you for bearing with me as we did that. Uh, that was a first attempt at feeding and filming at the same time. Um, we'll have to think about some of the other animals we feed. I'm not sure if people would want to watch that, but, uh, we'll give it a, we'll give it a thought. And if you, I'm just going to wait and see if anyone has any more questions. I thank you for watching. I, uh, thank you to all our New Hampshire Audubon members and our donors. If you are interested in coming, becoming a member or donating to New Hampshire Audubon, you can visit newhampshireaudubon.org, nhaudubon.org. And I, I thank you so very much for coming and uh, being patient with me. And if you have any feedback, um, I'm happy to hear it. As long as it doesn't have to do with needing an extra arm because I cannot grow an extra arm. But hopefully soon enough we'll have more than just me in the building and we will be able to uh, do some more videos for you all. So have a great afternoon. Stay safe. Uh, stay at home. And stay tuned for more videos from New Hampshire Audubon. Uh, live tomorrow will be story time with our president, Doug. I'm not sure what he's reading, but it's sure to be wonderful. So have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, I'll answer one more question, Callie. Callie's mom wants to know who you should call if you find an injured animal. That's a great question. You can go to the New Hampshire Fish and Game website and find a wildlife rehabilitator to the, um, for the area that you live in. And uh, when I sign off here, I will post a link to that so that you can easily access that. If there's any other questions that you have that I haven't answered, leave them in the comments, and I'm happy to post links uh, after I sign off. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.